For more on what's in store for the start of the 115th Congress, CBS News senior political editor Steve Chigueras is in our Washington bureau. So, Steve, on this reversal over the Office of, Con of Congressional Ethics, was the president-elect's criticism the nail in the coffin? Uh, Republicans are telling me that uh, it was it added to the pressure. Uh, so to say it was a nail in the coffin, potentially, but there was a lot of other stuff going on there. First of all, the media, the criticism in the media uh, was something that I think Republicans did not anticipate. I mean, this thing uh, took on a life of its own last night and uh, through the morning uh, to the surprise uh, of a lot of Republicans. And then what even surprised them even more uh, were the number of phone calls they were getting from constituents. This is what Republicans are telling me, that the phone was just ringing off the hook. Um, I'm told that Paul Ryan and Trump didn't even speak to each other until after this was yanked uh, from uh, the uh, rules package. Uh, so it wasn't something that uh, Trump really orchestrated, but um, there's no question that the Trump tweet, on top of all that other stuff, the media uh, barrage and, and the constituent calls, uh, was something that really, I think, got Republicans to just yank this. Hmm, interesting to hear that mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Well, President Obama, as you know, is making an appearance on Capitol Hill Wednesday to talk about saving Obamacare. What are you expecting from that meeting? Definitely a big time pep talk uh, to remind Democrats uh, of what he believes are the successes of Obamacare. But you've already seen Democratic leaders on the Hill uh, trying to whip up uh, their members to say, we've got to fight for this thing, uh, pointing out the successes, but also trying to, uh, trying to drum up grassroots support as well. Uh, there, there's going to be an effort, I think, on Democrats' part to try to tie uh, Republican leaders and, and Republicans in, in Congress to suggest that now that they're in charge, that Medicare and Medicaid uh, might be at stake. Uh, as well as Obamacare uh, might be at risk. And so they're going to try to get uh, the public really fired up on this issue and try to get them, again, just like we saw with this ethics thing, get them to pick up the phone and call their members of Congress, the Republican members, to say, don't kill Obamacare. I also want to ask you, Steve, about the Senate, which is responsible for confirming the president-elect's cabinet picks. Mm -hmm. In the case of someone like Rex Tillerson, for instance, there have been questions raised on both sides of the aisles about his ties to Russia. Uh, I wonder how you foresee that playing out. I mean, there's no question that is the elephant in the room, the, the Russia question, his ties to Putin. Uh, you've heard it not only from uh, Democrats, but you've heard it from some Republicans. And it's going to be a major part of the questioning of Tillerson. I think, let's, not keep, let's keep in mind, too, there are a lot of other things that uh, members want to know about Tillerson. First of all, what are his investments? They want to see his tax returns, Democrats especially. Uh, he has no government experience. I think there are going to be several, there can be several questions about what he, as a, uh, a private citizen, really would bring to the role of, of Secretary of State. And finally, there are a lot of questions just generally about where he stands, what his philosophy is in foreign policy on the various flashpoints around the world, including China, North Korea, uh, Syria, Iran. Those are just beginners. We don't know really where Tillerson is on any of that stuff. And so I think the members, not only Democratic members, but Republicans are going to have a lot of questions about all of that in addition to Russia. So on January 20th, when Mr. Trump is sworn in, do you expect his cabinet to be mostly in place? You know, it's an interesting question, and uh, you know, I'd say given the uh, pace of the uh, the confirmation hearings, we're probably not going to have the whole cabinet in place by January 20th. If you look back at Obama in 2009, he had a Democratic Senate, uh, yet there were several members of his cabinet that weren't sworn in until uh, late January, or even as late as February. So uh, I would imagine uh, not all of them will be in place by January 20th. And Steve, President-elect Trump tweeted Tuesday evening that he will be having a general news conference on January 11th. Just, that's just one day after President Obama's farewell address in Chicago. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that move? Well, we've been waiting for, what, 170 or so days for a formal press conference from Donald Trump. We expected this press conference last month. Uh, it was supposed to be in December to talk about how he was going to separate himself from his businesses. Uh, that is going to be the thrust of this news conference, uh, I imagine, next week. That's what they've been talking about. Uh, they've been, he's been working with his lawyers to figure out uh, how that's all going to work out. And then on top of that, you mentioned it's coming the day after Obama's farewell speech. I'm sure Trump is looking at this as an opportunity to rebut what the president uh, says uh, next Tuesday. So. It's something we're all going to be waiting for with bated breath, uh, and uh, <laughs> going to be a lot of eyes uh, on uh, on Donald Trump next Wednesday. I know, shaping up to be a really fascinating week next week. Steve Shigera, it's always great to see you. Thanks, and Happy New Year. Thanks, you too, Elaine.